so we took one class of this concept time value of money this is a basic concept this question can can come in the theory part also and this question can come in the uh, numerical part not directly but you have to use this in the concept of capital budgeting and in any other uh, any other concept wherever there is a concept of discounting okay so this concept is very useful and in the previous class we started this concept right so <clears throat> basically what is the concept of time value of money time value of money basically means very simple thing the value of a rupee received today is more than the value of a received value of the value of 1 rupee received later if we receive 1 rupees today it is more valuable it is more valuable as compared to the rupee that we receive one after uh, after one year okay so what is the reason for this why 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 this uh, difference in value we told and we discussed there are four factors so can you tell what are the four factors do you remember those four factors what are the four factors why there is a difference in the value of rupee today and after one year please unmute yourself and speak inflation inflation that is the first reason okay sorry future uncertainty yeah future uncertainty what else yeah we can invest the amount so there is investment opportunity also okay what else sorry yeah preference for immediate consumption so because of these four factors the value of money received today is more than the value of the rupee received a received later right now how do we use it practically basically uh we have to when we are basically taking any decision when we are doing any decision making for example we are doing any decision making regard regarding the investment right regarding the investment that is a capital budgeting decision so in this case in this case when we are making the when we are doing the capital budgeting decision in this case we have a uh, cash flows like there is a cash flow at year 0 1 2 3 4 5 right so suppose 10000 then 2000 2000 3000 4000 right so this is the cash outflow the amount that we are investing in the project and these are the cash inflow which we are having in the later part of the project in the later periods of the project so in this case if we have to compare this cash flow which happened after one year with the cash outflow that is happening today then we have to match the time value of both the rupee right so we have two options here either either we calculate the future value of present either we ca we calculate the future value of present amount this is known as, this is done through compounding technique or we do it through 
calculation of present value of future amounts this is done through discounting technique yes or no we have discussed this thing in the previous class also all of this is just re revision of the previous class ha anyone who was not present in that class anyone who is who was not present in that class but is present today okay i so it means everyone was available then we started the discussion on compounding techniques in the compounding technique we calculated the future value in multiple manners like when there are equal cash flows that is a series of the cash flows or which is annuity right or there are unequal cash flows like that so you, uh, we did not use the calculator on that day do you have the calculator today do you people have the calculator today okay so today we will be using the calculator also okay we will be using the calculator as we discuss forward right so sorry yes yes please ask sorry can you please uh, uh, tanish just give me few seconds actually i have to make it audible yes please ask now yeah so basically in compounding there were like five possible scenarios mm -hmm. so we discussed the first four but uh, future value of anything you will be having to take that so okay that is not relevant for us that is not relevant for us that is oh, yeah so because there are so many things but something which we are not going to use or something which is not helpful for us that we not discuss okay so we, today we will start with the discounting techniques of the where we will be basically so why we use the discounting technique why we use the discounting technique so basically the purpose is to make the future cash flows occurring over the periods comparable to make the future cash flows occurring over the periods comparable at the present time so suppose this is the timeline this is time 0 1 2 3 4 4 and uh, suppose uh, on time 0 we are spending 10000 rupees it is a cash outflow and on year end 1 we are having 2000 cash inflow 3000 4000 3000 2000 it can be any figure right i am taking any random figure so in this case 
this happened today, that means the value of the today amount is more than the value of the future. Okay. आपने देखा previous lecture time value of money. कल इवनिंग में जैसी हुआ था. ओके ओके आज क्लास के बाद देख लीजिएगा ठीक है आज समझिए जितना सुन में आ रहा है अदरवाइज यू विल बी टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस ओनली इसका भी आपको रिकॉर्डिंग दे देंगे नहीं ठीक है सो इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट द माउंट दैट वी आर गेटिंग आफ्टर वन ईयर टू थाउजेंड रुपीज वी हैव टू मेक इट कंपेरेबल टू टूडे इसको आज को हमें कंपेरेबल बनाना है राइट सो द वैल्यू ऑफ टू थाउजेंड रुपीज टूडे विल बी लेस देन 2000. एक साल बाद जो 2000 हजार पर रिसीव होने वाला है उसकी वैल्यू आज कम होगी दिस इज अंसेप्ट ऑफ टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी राइट सो वी विल कैलकुलेट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस टू थाउजेंड रुपीज विच इज गोइंग टू बी रिसीव आफ्टर वन ईयर सिमिलरली थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज विच वी आर गोइंग टू रिसीव आफ्टर टू ईयर्स फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज विच वी आर गोइंग टू रिसीव आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज विच वी आर गोइंग टू गेट आफ्टर फोर ईयर्स लाइक दैट so in this manner we have to calculate the value in this well in this manner we have to calculate the present value and for this present value we have to use the discounting technique okay so this is the discounting technique or present value technique and this is very very helpful in the calculation of uh capital budgeting related issues and many other like dividend and all okay so the concept of present value is very very important and it will be applied in a good manner right this is basically you can write exactly reverse of compounding technique because in the compounding technique we are calculating the future value of present amount and here we are calculating the present value of future amount so two are exactly opposite two are exactly in the uh, you know two are completely opposite concept okay so here we will have three scenarios first is present value of a future sum Some means amount, money, yeah, amount of transaction, right? Present value of future sum. Second is present value of a series of अनइक्वल कैश फ्लोज एंड थर्ड इज प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ ए सीरीज ऑफ इक्वल कैश फ्लोज so this three scenario we will discuss okay so let us discuss the first scenario that is the present value of the future sum this is scenario number a a b and c so in the first scenario it is very simple that this is a timeline in this timeline we have year 0 year 0 means today beginning of the current year 
2 and 3 and suppose we are getting rupees 10,000 after 3 years we are getting 10,000 rupees after 3 years so how do we calculate so basically in this case the formula present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r raised to power n. So this is a formula. This is a formula for calculating the present value. So how do we, cal how do we drive this formula? You remember the formula of uh, future value? is equal to present value 1 plus r n yes or no now just reverse it so present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus r n very simple as I told you discounting is the completely opposite of compounding the same thing we can see in the formula also okay so in this case, feature value is how much? 10,000. 1 plus r, r here is 0.1. Suppose, uh, you know, in this case, let us say, rate of discount is 10%. So r, the value of r is 0 0.1. Are you getting? Or simply, you can write 10 upon 100. How do we calculate 0 0.1? How is it coming? So 10 upon 100, you know, and then raised to power n, that means 3. So 1.1 1 .1 raised to power 3. Sorry. Ha, isko humne divide nahi kiya mene. Yes. Are you getting this, everyone? And basically, one way is we will calculate this. That is also right way. We can calculate this 1.1 .1 into It will be 1.331 to 10,000 divided by. It comes out to be 7513 rupees. If we calculate it manually, so 10,000 divided by 1.331 is equal to 7513. But we can use it. We can calculate it uh, using the table also. Okay using the table also you have this or not okay you have this table and all okay okay so please come to uh, the table okay in the table please come to this uh, second table that is a present value of interest factor of rupee 1 per period at i percent for n, peri n periods okay the second table hai, okay after the first page the second table present value interest factor pvif okay so here just notice period how many three in the vertical line are you with me everyone online are you with me Okay, good, good. So, Tanya? Yes, okay, good. So, period 3 and rate of interest is how much? 10%. So, in the third row, see the last column. Third row, that is a period 3, last column, that is a 0 0.751. Okay, 0 0.751. So, you can simply calculate it 10,000 we will multiply actually 10,000 say we will multiply the PVIF 
of 3% 10 years. So it comes out to be 751. So we will calculate up to three values. We will calculate up to three values. So even if you write 7510, it is okay. Agar hum three value to calculate karte hain, still it is okay, no problem. Because in the decision making, the decision will not change by few rupees, right? So both are okay. Whether you write 7513 or you write 7510, both are okay, not a problem. Yeah, so basically, hum kya kar rahe hai what we are doing is a very good question. So here we calculated 10,000 uh, 10, divided by 1.1 raised to the power 3, right? So can we say 10,000 multiplied by 1 upon 1.10 raised to the power 3? So this is actually PVIF. Jo humne kya na calculate PVIF 3% 10 years, 751, 0 0.751, right? Got it? The screen is visible. Uh, you are using laptop. <laughs> uh, still, is it, it is not visible. Ye, ye dekhiye. This part not visible. So, kahan tak visible hai? Fir main kaise? How do I identify? Accordingly, I will, I will try ki I manage it in the same portion. Kahan tak visible? Tell me the area till where it is visible. 10,000 divided by 1.1 raised to power 3, that is visible, right? Okay, okay. So let me do on the fresh page. Take care. PV is equal to future value divided by 1 plus RAR raised to power N is equal to 10,000 divided by 1 plus 0.1 raised to power 3. Or same thing, can we write? I have to go vertical, <laughs> otherwise same problem will happen. So 10,000 multiplied by 1 upon 1.1 raised to power 3. So this is basically nothing but present value interest factor at for 3 years at 10% value, 10% return of interest. So this comes out to be 10,000 multiplied by 751. So the amount comes out to be rupees 7510. Yes? Yeah. Clear, Amit? Calculator kaise use karing ya, okay? Please open the calculator. Open the calculator first. So in the calculator, Step one, press or you know, add one and point one. Kije, hai calculator up to us. Bring in the next class. No, don't use calculator with this mobile phone. Wo work nahi karega. I'm showing it to you. One plus we are just calculating this PVIF, okay? However, in the exam, it will not be required. Because in the exam, in the question itself, they are giving the factor, PVIF. Exam may not required, but still I am showing it to you, in case you require it, okay? So, uh, in this case, what we will do first, we will calculate the value of PVIF from the calculator, okay? Without referring to the table, without referring to the table, we are calculate we are using the calculator so first we will add 1 and point 0.1 okay so see this calculator 1 plus point 0.1 equal to kitna gaya point 0.1 then multiply sorry right multiply okay then equal 
सो वेन यू इक्वल दैट मीन्स रेस्ट टू पावर टू हो गया ओके अगेन इफ यू प्रेस वंस अगेन इक्वल कितना हो गया थ्री टाइम्स हो गया ओके सो दिस इज टाइप इक्वल थ्री टाइम्स सो दैट कम्स आउट टू बी वैल्यू आ गया आपका वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री वन ओके एंड स्टेप फोर यू डिवाइड वन अपॉइंट वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री वन सो वन अपॉन वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री वन सो इज इक्वल टू सेवन फाइव वन थ्री दिस इज वन वे दिस इज ओनली वन वे ओके वन कैलकुलेटर में हमने कैलकुलेट किया फ्रॉम वन वे ओनली ओके गुड डिस्कनेक्टेड That is that was a long way, and in the calculator only. There is a short way. So what you will you do? You will divide one by one point one. Okay. What will you do? One divide one point one equal to okay. So first you will first step. Okay, then you will press is equal to n number of times. So it is three times. So one divided by one point one one two three point seven five one three. कोई मैजिक नहीं है सिंपल कैलकुलेशन है ओके बट यू मे बी फैमिलियर विद दिस मल्टीपल वेज सो दैट व्हेन यू गेट कंफ्यूज्ड यू कैन रीच आउट एनी वेज दिल्ली में हम एक बात बोलते हैं लाइक इफ यू इफ यू गेट लॉस्ट इन द रोड जस्ट कीप फॉलोइंग द डायरेक्शन इफ यू इन द राइट डायरेक्शन तो कहीं ना गली जाके निकलेगी तो आप वहीं पहुंच चुके हो गए पे पहुंचना था आपको है तो ना दिल्ली में ऐसे अगर आप इफ यू नो कि हाँ आई एम गोइंग इन द वेस्ट और वेस्ट में ही ये मेरा प्लेस है बट समवेयर आई एम लॉस्ट तो कीप मूविंग इन द वेस्ट ओनली सो एट सम प्लेस यू विल फाइंड सम वे आउट कोई स्टेट मिलेगा आपको एंड यू विल फाइंड कि हाँ जहाँ मुझे पूछना था एक्चुअली मैं उसी के पैरल आई वॉज रनिंग द पैरल ओनली ओके सो इन द एग्जाम ऑल्सो इट कैन हैपन यू माइट नॉट रिमेंबर द फॉर्मूला यू माइट नॉट गेट द इमीजिएट आइडिया इन दैट केस यू कैन यूज द अदर वे आउट एंड डेफिनेटली If you use a short way out, it is helpful. It will save your time. But sometimes, you know, uh, uh, the question that co type of question they are giving, 
the language that they are giving might be confusing. So then you can drive, you can understand the language using this kind of multiple way outs. Okay. Now scenario two. Scenario two kya hai? It is a present value of a series of unequal cash flows. So let us see on the timeline. This is zero. This is period one. So we get ten thousand rupees. Here we get two thousand rupees. And here we get sorry, five thousand Ujaga. Here we get two thousand rupees. One, two, three. Right. So in this case, how do we calculate the present value of all these cash flows? So what we will do? First, ten thousand divided by, or simply, you know, we can use the present value annuity factor. Right? I am directly moving to the PVIF. Now directly shortcut to me move around. Okay. So ten thousand into PVIF. Ten percent, one year. How much is the value? Please tell me. Ten thousand multiplied by. Uh, please tell me the table value. Refer, refer it. I want everyone to refer it also, okay? Because that will, that will, you will develop the habit. Point nine zero nine. Okay. So you please make a habit of referring to it. The purpose is that you refer to it. Referring me will not be much helpful because I will not appear in the exam. near the question they will give the relevant value ha in the previous class i discussed and even you might have two books of the fm na so second book mein aap jaiye previous question dikhaiye mujhe ek baar the second booklet na you see the previous question uh, come to page number 97 of the second booklet okay this thing i discussed in the previous class also some offline student are asking how to refer how, you know what type of question they will give in the previous year so i'm just showing the previous question to them second booklet page number 97 You can see the key is discounting factor, na? No? They are giving the discounting factor, right? Yeah, a PV of one rupee at the discount of one percent. They are giving, right? Shiva, got it? So you get it, okay? CA me bhi dete hai na? CA me? In that CA exam, they give it. Near the question, na? Ha, yes. Ha, sometimes they <laughs> they will not give. <laughs> But in here they give. Here, multiplied by PVIF, ten percent, two years. And here it will be ten thousand multiplied by PVIF, ten percent. Three years. Okay, I am writing it for your purpose, explaining it for your purpose. But in the exam, no need to write every word. In the exam, you can write in a short form also. Exam, so you can directly ten thousand multiplied by point nine nine zero plus ten thousand multiplied by this uh, like that. Okay. So how much is this PVIF? Ten percent two years. Point eight to six. बचपन से करते आ रहे हैं अभी याद ही हो गया है ना ये एट टू सिक्स जीरो है ना 
सौ रुपीज एट टू सिक्स जीरो थर्ड पीरियड दिस इज पॉइंट सेवन फाइव वन सो सेवन फाइव वन जीरो सो इफ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑन दिस टाइम सो इट विल बी सिंपल दैट इज नाइन जीरो नाइन जीरो प्लस एट टू सिक्स जीरो प्लस सेवन फाइव वन जीरो please tell me the amount now start using the calculator i want you to use the calculator you tell me the amount so that you become proficient at it, at it. and i i want everyone to cal uh, calculate actually even if one person is telling but i am going bit slow so that you become habitual of using the calculator 24 and i will not move till the time everyone does it स्टार्टिंग में करूंगा ऐसा लेटर ऑन तो आई विल मूव हाँ ओ सॉरी 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 ओके 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 दैट इज फाइन बट यार राइट यूर राइट वी हैव टू चेंज इट यू ऑब्जर्व इट राइट बट वेरी लेट थैंक यू फॉर पॉइंटिंग इट आउट हैव टू चेंज इट दिस इज प्रेजेंस ऑफ माइंड अब बताइए फाइव थाउजेंड इंटू पॉइंट एट टू सिक्स फोर वन हाँ टू थाउजेंड इंटू पॉइंट सेवन फाइव वन वन फाइव जीरो टू so basically in case of unequal cash flow na there is no shortcut for every year we have to apply the present value interest factor because every every year the value of the amount is changing so we cannot have any other shortcut so in this case what is the formula formula is present value is equal to a1 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 is the amount at the end of the year 1 1 plus r 1 that is a interest factor 1 plus r raised to power 2 okay so in this fashion it will continue till a n divided by r 1 plus r raised to power n you can write this formula how we are calculating this or this will come out to be sum n t equals to 1 from 1 se lekar ke a t divided by 1 plus r raised to power n or a1 multiplied by present value interest factor for t1 plus a2 present value interest factor for t2 like this till an present value interest factor tn this is for understanding only in exam they will not ask but only for understanding no 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 exam may not required i told you you will not get the time also neither they are expecting you in exam suppose there is a question on time value of money so there you will tell the meaning i i discussed the answer structure in the previous class how to write the answer of the time value of money so you will write the meaning of the time value of money concept give the quotation then write the reasons four reasons then you write there are two techniques compounding and discounting then maybe you can give one uh, one or two liner example 10000 rupees received after one year we can discount it today or uh, we can uh, we can compound the today value to After one year, like that, you can give a small example, 
and uh, then you will write the practical applications of the time value of money so in that only you will get 150 words you will not get much time now coming to the numerical questions in the numerical question they are directly giving the present value interest factor and there are so many other calculations which you have to do so they are not expecting you to write all of this the third scenario present value of a series of equal cash flows that means we are receiving the equal amount of money in the future right example all these example i am taking from the same document which i have given to you aapko diya na this document i have taken from this so if you want to read if you, like you want to like some of you might be not that much proficient in uh, financial management so for you people this document will be very helpful because everything is given in the pro, in simple language Okay. Example. Suppose you can see example uh, nine, page number two point one five. Example nine, page number two point one five of this document. The exam. The example is very simple. That there is an annuity of a cash inflow. Annuity means same. इक्वल अमाउंट एवरी ईयर एन्यूटी का मतलब दो चीजें होंगी द अमाउंट इज इक्वल एंड इट इज हैविंग कमिंग एवरी ईयर ओके सो एन्यूटी ऑफ कैश फ्लो फॉर थ्री ईयर्स थ्री टाइम्स राइट एंड आर इज टेन परसेंट सो कैलकुलेट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू सो इन दिस केस प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ एन्यूटी इज इक्वल टू अमाउंट दैट इज अ टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज multiplied by 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus r raised to power n divided by r is equal to 10000 1 minus 1 divided by 1.1 raised to power 3 divided by 0.1 or this value we can directly calculate from the table table mein aapko milega ye okay so table mein where you will find it please come to page the fourth page the last table actually present value interest factor of an ordinary annuity of 1 rupee last page of the table amit nahi table aapke paas मिला नहीं या घर छोड़ाए अच्छा तो चलिए ठीक है सो यू हैव दिस थ्री इयर्स के लिए ठीक है एंड टेन परसेंट है ना इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम थ्री इयर्स एंड लास्ट लास्ट कॉलम टेन परसेंट 2.487. So value of this is 2.487. That means 24,870. देखिए जहाँ पर भी there is a table concept. Rest assured, in the previous year they are always given the table. derivation of the formula has been given on the page number 2.14 so if you are interested in how it is derived you can read it yourself for you what you have to remember is very simple 
this simple formula PVA is equal to A multiplied by present value interest factor of annuity N R. This formula you have to remember. Okay. And uh, summary of these formulas is given already on uh, page number 2.22 and 2.3. 2.3. So all the formulas are summarized at the end. You can see page number 2.22 and 2.33. 2.3. All the formulas are summarized. Next concept. The next concept is present value of an present value of a perpetuity. What is perpetuity? It is a infinite series of perpetuity means. Infinite series of cash flows occurring at regular intervals. Infinite series of cash flows occurring at regular time intervals. So suppose, suppose, suppose there is a person dependent upon you. Suppose there is a person dependent upon you, and you want to pay this dependent person ten thousand rupees per month, forever. So, how much money you need to invest today, so that automatically. This ten thousand rupees keep receiving to that person, okay? Or in other, like the example that has been given in the book is, there is a person, there is a uh, suppose big businessman. This person want to establish a scholarship. That some student will get some scholarship, and this scholarship amount will be fixed every year. So how much money this person want to? Should uh, should invest in FD so that automatically the interest of that uh, FD become the scholarship amount. So this is what is uh, the usage of this kind of thing. Okay, so <coughs> it is very simple. The PV of a per per perpetuity. How do we calculate? It is equal to PV P is equal to A divided by R. So suppose the person want to receive ten thousand rupees, and the rate of interest is point one. So you deposit one lakh rupees, and every year you'll get one lakh rupees. Well, one ten thousand rupees. Very simple. So if the businessman want to get the, you know, want to give the ten thousand rupees scholarship every year. This person has to invest one lakh rupees in the FD. That FD is giving ten thousand every year, and this is automatic now. Okay.
you can also see a couple of more concept and uh, these are given but let us quickly complete them also okay like uh, this future value of the future value or present value of an annuity due so what is the meaning of annuity due simply if you say annuity that means cash flows occur at the end of each year at the end this is the word but annuity due means the cash flows occur in the beginning of every year they occur at the beginning of every year okay so in this case future value how do we calculate of an annuity due is equal to annuity amount multiplied by future value interest factor of annuity multiplied by 1 plus r so th this will be the addition hai na this will be the addition part actually ye aapko add kiya hai humne example you can see page number 2.16 2.16 please see the example quickly to point example number 11 page number 2.16 Mr X made a recurring deposit of 10000 in the beginning of each of the 3 year starting now at 10%. So one person is investing 10000 rupees in the beginning of the year only. So what amount this person will receive after 3 years? Okay? So after 3 years what amount this person will receive? Simple. This is 10000 multiplied by the FVIF A that is a 3.310 multiplied by 1.1 1.1. So simply we have to multiply by one plus r. Now present value of an annuity. Please come to the next page, two point one seven. Example twelve. नहीं आपको इसमें ये भी लेके आएगा रो सारा कुछ है ना? Should bring. Example twelve. Mr. X has to receive. Mr. X has to receive an amount of ten thousand in the beginning of next three years, starting from now, from a sum invested at ten percent rate of interest. Find the present value of sum assured. In this case also, it is very simple. Present value is equal to your annuity amount multiplied by. Present value interest factor of annuity multiplied by one plus r. Here also we will do the same thing. So you can you can see ten thousand multiplied by two point four eight seven multiplied by one point one zero. The next is perpetuity growing at a constant rate.
परपिच्युटी ग्रोइंग एट एन कॉन्स्टेंट रेट so here example like we take the example of businessman giving the scholarship but now this scholarship will keep increasing every year the amount of the scholarship will keep increasing every year okay so in this case how do we calculate present value is equal to cash flow divided by r minus g g is equal to growth rate so this like example uh, 13 please read page number 2.17 example 13 a college want to award a scholarship of 1000 per year to its meritorious student college jo hai wo apne meritorious student ko 1000 rupees per year scholarship dena chahta hai right at the first scholarship the first scholarship will be rewarded after one year and the amount of scholarship will keep increasing at the constant rate of 5% to offset the inflation kyunki mehangai hogi so there will be inflation so we want to protect the scholarship amount from the adverse impact of inflation right find the present value of this scholarship find the present value of this scholarship if the rate of interest is 10% okay so in this case cash flow is how much 1000 Divided by R, that is a point one minus point zero five. Okay, so this out comes out to be one thousand divided by point zero one five. That is rupees twenty thousand. the next is present value of an annuity growing at a constant rate present value of an annuity please come to page number 2.18 please read the question a person want to avoid a scholarship of 1000 per year for the next 10 years The first scholarship will be rewarded after the end of one year, and thereafter the amount of scholarship will grow at the rate of five percent per year to offset the inflation. Find the sum to be invested now for this scholarship. If the rate of if the rate of interest is ten percent, so here please see the formula. Present value is equal to cash flow divided by R minus G. we will multiply 1 minus so this is very extreme not required for you abhi required nahi hai i think you will get confused chhodi isko hai na not required for you theek hai so we'll complete the concept of time value of money here and uh, any question please let me know okay one more thing you can do if you want to practice if you want to do the practice i can give you some numerical or i think rather than than that we can solve the numerical of the capital budgeting you know there only we can apply this yes uh, 
that is annuity series of cash flow and that is single sum first one is single sum like we took the first scenario third scenario first scenario may like one sum only we are looking into and when there is a series of equal cash flow then it becomes a annuity so in that case is the third table okay last table fourth table so now after this concept is discussed let us start capital budgeting concept so basically in the basics of the financial management we discussed that there are primarily three kind of decisions which are required in the financial management so out of this we have a very important decision that is a investment decision so in the investment decision what we do we are actually having the money suppose a new business you want to start so you will have some money you will get it from bank or you will get from your own pocket or you will get from the shareholder and then you will start analyzing multiple areas multiple project multiple uh, you know possible businesses or possible ways where you can invest it so which alternative should be Uh, finally chosen this process is basically the process that we use in the capital budgeting okay so please write the the capital budgeting decision involves or investment decision involves the entire process the entire process of decision making the capital budgeting decision involves the entire process of decision making relating to acquisition of long term assets whose returns are expected to arise over a period beyond 1 year hello is it okay now okay so it is a long term asset capital budgeting decision involves the entire process of decision making relating to acquisition of long term 
for example if government decides to lay down a metro project so this metro project will be having the amount investment of 5000 crore 10000 crore the return will be coming maybe you know it can start maybe after 2 3 years only when the project gets started but recovery of the amount will happen maybe in 15 20 years so this is a long term project right long term project whose returns are expected to arise over a period beyond one year okay so basically in the investment decision we have two kind of decision one is long term decision which are capital budgeting and the short term that is less than one year that is this is part of the working capital management capital budgeting is basically long term investment decision and for the short term we will discuss in the working capital management chapter so it's a long term decision you know it is a decision regarding acquisition of long term asset whose returns are expected to arise over a period of one year oh sorry over a period beyond one year please uh, come to page number 93 of the book keep come to page number 93 of the book there are couple of definition given out of this definition you can remember annual definition uh charles t horngren capital budgeting is a long term planning for making and financing proposed capital outlays and second is john j hampton capital budgeting is a con is concerned with the firm's pro formal process for the acquisition and, and investment of capital so any one definition you can remember charles horngren or john hampton charles horngren Horngren or John Hampton. Okay. Now, nature of the capital budgeting. Nature of the capital budgeting. First, it is a long-term investment decision. Yes or no? Long-term investment decision. In the bracket, please write more than one year. So, long-term here means the returns are expected beyond one year. Returns जो हैं वो beyond one year expected हैं. Investment might happen in less than one year. but returns will come beyond one year period right number 2 it is irre irreversible in nature means irreversible it means when it starts then if you reverse then it is giving you some loss for example we start we decided that okay we will lay down the metro project and this takes maybe 5 years to start a metro at a particular route so after one year you decide oh now i will stop so you can stop definitely but that you know the amount that you have invested something that you have done already will not be giving you some return the return will start after a gestation period only so in that sense it is irreversible means when it starts and you know this is a very strategic decision any capital budgeting decision is a strategic decision right why because the survival of the company the growth of the company right the goodwill of the company operations profitability everything depends upon the good capital budgeting decision everything depends upon whether you are choosing it right or not there have been many cases where people have invested a huge amount of money and they did not get the return in real estate uh, like there in delhi and cr there are many real estate project which started but they started at long wrong time like there was a period of time in 2010 2015 when there was a good growth prices of the flats were rising very fast but then suddenly in 2020 or even before that also that so recession start coming in the real estate market people suddenly found that the prices are very high so the number of buyers reduced slowly slowly the price started decreasing 
now the people who have invested maybe after five years ago, now their amount is held up. Their stock is not being sold up. Now these companies bank go bankrupt. Yes or no? So if you take the decision wrongly, if you take the decision at wrong time, then it can even threaten your survival. It can even extinct the whole business itself. Okay? Or it can even grow you to to the next level. It can even make your growth to the next level if you invest at right time at right place. You would have heard from your parent ki when when we were young, this property was available at a very small cost. Now the price of this property is in many crores. Hey na? So <laughs> some person invested in that project at that point of time. Now, like for example, uh, okay, this example is a bit different, but uh, I would like to give. Like Infosys, someone who invested in 1980s is a billionaire now, right? So many other companies are there who have the good potential, okay? So this capital budgeting is a long-term decision, okay? It is irreversible in nature. Next, it requires a large amount of fund. That means you may not have the fund yourself. You may require the financing from outside, mostly from bank or from capital, okay? Next, it is the most critical and complicated decision for a finance manager. Most complicated, why? Huge sum of money is involved. And a lot of people are involved. A single person cannot decide, right? Next, it involves an element of risk as the investment is to be recovered in the future. So there is a risk. There is a risk, right? There is a risk. Please write a couple of more points here. Please write a few more points here. It affects the capacity to compete. It affects the capacity to compete. Affects capacity to compete. Point number six. You know? This question already came in 2006. Then, it is a top management decision. It is a top management decision. And the next, it is basis of operational policies. So even your working capital decision will be impacted because of this. Huh, operational policies. Like operational policies means how the company will operate. Suppose you are investing in uh, automatic machines. So accordingly, you will need the good engineers. You will need the right kind of uh, support infrastructure, like electricity, internet. So your operations will be impacted. Your quality of product, nature of product, output, everything will be impacted. Okay? You have some question? Depends, actually. So uh, suppose if there's a 10, 10 marker question, you can explain in one, one line. If it is a 20 marker, then you can give the example also. But normally, they will not ask beyond 10 marker. Because this question, 2006, very long ago, 16 years ago. So now they will ask maximum five marks. They will, what they will do? They will, uh, they, will, they will say, discuss the nature of capital budgeting and maybe challenges also means they will add one more point so if you see the latest pattern of 2022 you will find they are giving two questions converging and they are saying five plus five that pattern they are giving so in that case five marks you will be able to write this much only out of maybe uh, suppose you're writing six point you can add one example 
or two example like in two point you write a small small example like i give the example of metro so you write like metro return expected after 5 years like this okay or yeah okay now types of capital budgeting or uh, types of capital budgeting decisions types of capital budgeting decisions types of capital budgeting decisions or this is also known as scope of capital budgeting scope of capital budgeting so there are two major categories first is on the basis of firm's existence and second is on the basis of decision situation on the basis of firm's existence we have two kind of decision cost reduction decisions means we want we want to re reduce the cost of production or something out of this we can have first the replacement decision and second we can have the modernization decision second is the revenue expansion decision so replacement decision basically means we are replacing the old machinery with the new machinery because when the machine gets old its efficiency reduces its input output ratio gets reduced and even the quality of product might be defective but with the new machine maybe automatic machine we get better product and maybe more quantity also right modernization basically means we are modernizing the facilities okay then comes revenue expansion decisions so revenue expansion decision will be having first expansion decisions we are expanding the business like opening some new plant or diversification decision we are diversifying the business like we are getting into the new business line or third can be setting up of new business completely like there is a new business some startup company or any old company want to start a new company new business at all
Now, on the basis of decision criteria, decision situation, it can be again of three types. First is mutually exclusive decision, where acceptance of one project leads to rejection of another like if you choose machine A then machine B is automatically rejected or suppose we are trying to buy some premises we showroom ke liye koi premises chahiye. so we once we buy one building then other building are automatically rejected so it is mutually exclusive that means the selection of one means exclusion of another. Second is accept or reject decision. It happens in case of independent projects. The projects are independent. There is no dependency. Right? The projects are independent. So in this case, we are having some criteria, right? We are having some criteria. For example, if we are investing in a machine and because of that machine, we get say 10% return, then we will accept it. So we have some minimum criteria, okay? So we compare the return on investment against minimum acceptable rate of return so suppose minimum acceptable rate of return is 10 percent so we will accept a project we will accept a project only if this is giving 10 percent or more than 10 percent and this is independent of other that means we might accept all the project or we might reject all the project all the project are independent of an another so the first scenario mutual exclusive happens mostly where there is a shortage of capital second scenario happens mostly where there is a abundance of capital and it depends upon other things also third third kind of scenario is contingent decisions contingent decisions It happens in case of complementary projects. That means we will evaluate two projects together. For example, if we have to establish a power plant. So along with the power plant, we also need some maybe power uh, water supply. So we will evaluate both projects together. That is a, you know, Acceptance of one project will be dependent upon acceptance of another project. Both will be measured and both will be evaluated simultaneously and then decision will be based upon whether other is acceptable or not. Suppose we, we don't have the power good water supply and the cost of water supply comes to be very heavy. So even we, we, may, we may reject the power plant decision because even power plant is feasible but water supply of the power plant that is not feasible. So both are complementary, means dependent upon each other. Complementary. 
हाँ मे मे और मे नॉट हैपन अपॉन द बेस्ड अपॉन अनदर प्रोजेक्ट कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ना हाँ यस बोथ आर इंटरडिपेंडेंट एंड लास्ट वन इज कैपिटल लाशनिंग डिसीजंस कैपिटल लाशनिंग डिसीजंस व्हाट इज कैपिटल लाशनिंग डिसीजंस basically when we have the shortage of money that means we are basically selecting the project with higher ranking on maybe like uh, npv or irr or so okay so we will discuss this capital uh, capital lashing separately also because this separate concept may be relevant for the exam already asked in the exam also so we will discuss this separately as of now just understand when we have the shortage of money we need to rank the project based upon the npv ir and then we need to choose the project which are providing maximum return or maximum benefit okay so that is the capital lashing decision right everyone any questions so far now uh, homework for you please come to this uh, importance of capital budgeting page number 94 then objectives of capital budgeting factors affecting capital budgeting all these are very simple self explanatory okay so page number 94 page number 95 there is a social cost benefit analysis also this is very simple that means in addition to the money factors we also need to consider the social environmental impact for example if we have to establish a project then if, if it is going to create some pollution then we will also consider that thing the cost of cleaning the pollution or how it is going to impact the local community and how do we compensate the local community so those indirect cost which are going to incur for example ntpc project in joshimat that uh, destroyed that i told in the last class that in that case the cost of the plant will also include the cost which this ntpc has to incur to compensate for the loss the people are making because of the project okay so basically we will do the cost benefit analysis not only from the monetary point of view but also from the point of view of how it is going to impact the people around how it is going to impact the environment around so that is a co social cost benefit analysis okay then types of investment project page number 96 uh this replacement or modernization project okay you can complete this also topic number 4.9 types of investment project that we have discussed okay replacement or modernization growth expansion these are self explanatory isko understand read karenge to understand ho jayega okay not a problem then kinds of investment decision independent mutually exclusive contingent and capital lashing this also i have told you okay now comes the next part it is a very important part the process of capital budgeting okay the process of capital budgeting and uh, also write uh, one like before this please write somewhere like in the page number 94 only at the top you can write three points the problems and difficulties in capital budgeting okay page number 94 mein top mein where there is a importance of capital budgeting na you write three points problems and difficulties with respect to capital budgeting decisions
फर्स्ट नंबर वन फ्यूचर अनसर्टेनिटी सो देर इज अनसर्टेनिटी बोथ इन कैश आउटफ्लो एंड कैश इनफ्लो द अमाउंट दैट वी विल बी इन्वेस्टिंग एंड द अमाउंट दैट वी विल गेट ए एस ए रिटर्न एग्जाम्पल अलास्का पाइपलाइन आई हैव गिवन द एग्जाम्पल इन योर स्टार्टिंग पेज सो आई एम जस्ट डिस्कसिंग दैट एग्जाम्पल इन द ब्रैकेट यू कैन राइट अलास्का पाइपलाइन एग्जाम्पल इन द ब्रैकेट प्लीज राइट अलास्का पाइपलाइन एग्जाम्पल सो वॉट हैपन इन दिस केस they expected the investment of 700 million dollars but how much was the final investment 10 times 7 billion dollars after the project got completed the final amount came out to be 7 billion dollars that means 10 times it might happen mostly in those project wherever there is a involvement of big area or uh, geographical factors might impact so this is the case Future uncertainty is very very high. Okay. Like you can see this example of NTPC also, Joshimat example. This also a perfect example because still that plant is not operational. They are building it for so much time. So I don't know the exact figure, but I have worked in that company. So I know that they are doing it for a long period of time. Many times they have missed the deadline also. And you know, recently this uh, last year flood also came, 2021 last last year. and now this happened so now they have to stop the operation so a lot of other factors are working external factors are working which are not in your control and which you can't even uh, you know predict in the advance number 2 please write number 2 time element is very long time element is very very long and third difficulty in measurement difficulty in measurement like there are many highways uh, where government is investing okay so there they expect that certain number of people will come but actually when this highway gets started when it is a time of toll collection then they find the very less number of people are using that way so you can write in the example example traffic risk traffic low traffic risk low traffic risk in high road highway projects road highway projects so these are the problems or difficulties in the capital budgeting decisions future uncertainty both in cash outflow and cash inflow future uncertainty both in cash outflow and cash inflow now let us see the capital budgeting decision process so first is the first step is basically project identification that we identify 
which project or which projects are available, the possible projects. Then we do the preliminary screening. That is, we see the technical feasibility. For example, if Delhi Metro has to start a new route, then it will do the technical feasibility. Is it possible technically, geographically, to lay down a metro line? Okay, where Delhi Metro though, can start metro line everywhere, anywhere, in very crowded places also, it can do anything. But still, technical feasibility is the second step. Third is the detailed project evaluation. So in the detailed project evaluation, the work that we are doing, that it starts. Because here the financial feasibility also comes into play. Financial and commercial viability or feasibility, right? This is where our capital budgeting role comes into play. This is where the role of the financial management comes into play, okay? So first what we do, here there are various sub-steps. We estimate cash outflows of the project. Then we estimate cash inflows of the project. And after this, we apply the suitable capital budgeting technique. So here we apply suitable capital budgeting technique. There are many techniques like ARR, IRR, NPV, PI, right? So which, te which technique is useful? We pick up and we apply that, okay? And based upon that, we finally select the best pos possible alternative. Based upon that, we select the best possible alternative. After this, the next step is, that is step number four, that is the project implementation. And finally, project operationalization. Implementation means basically we start installing the project or start executing the project. And project operationalized means the operations start. That means rev return starts. So our role, that is the capital budgeting role, will be in the detailed project evaluation, okay? So we will learn how to estimate cash outflow. We will learn how to apply, uh, sorry, how to estimate cash inflow. And we will learn the various capital budgeting technique. This is the numerical part. This is the numerical part, okay? And here, one more thing that we do is, we basically take into account the cert, uh, risk factors. Okay, A risk factor we also take into account. Okay, like there is a risk of low return. There is a risk of high 
uh, outflow. So multiple kinds of risk can be there. Okay, so now we will discuss the capital rationing, the concept of capital rationing. So the concept of capital rationing basically please write it is a situation it is a situation where the firm is not able to finance where the firm is not able to finance all the profitable investment projects. That means there are multiple profitable projects. Multiple project hi nahi hai sirf. Multiple profitable projects hai. Multiple viable projects are there. Right? due to limited funds due to limited funds or due to time restrictions so either it can be because of we have the less amount of money or we have the less time we have the less time that also possible Please write next line. The limited funds are allocated. The limited funds are allocated to one or more projects as no firm has unlimited funds to bring maximum contribution to bring maximum contribution to the wealth of the firm. So here we keep in mind that how can we maximize the wealth. we want to ensure that we get the highest return from the available options.
okay so this is the meaning now there are two types of capital lessening hard or soft hard capital lessening when the limitation is because of external factor that means we are not able to arrange the money we have the limitation of money or soft capital lessening is when it is a internal decision we have the money suppose tata group tata group has lot of money but its internal policies internal decision or internal policies they are allocating the limited fund in a particular sector for example in the software sector they are saying only this much of money we have in the software so as a company they do not have the limitation of fund but in the particular area or in a particular case they have the limitation of fund because of their internal policies because of their strategic policies so that is called soft capital lessening okay now what factors there are two type of factors affecting capital budgeting uh, sorry capital lessening again the same thing external factors and internal factors external factors and internal factors so basically i am giving you the ready made answer 10 marker this question is already coming many times last came in 2021 also <laughs> So, 2021, the question was, "What is capital lessening? Explain the principles of capital lessening." So, need of capital lessening. Sorry, uh, the factors or need of capital lessening. It can be because of external factors. Just come hard. कैपिटल आशन भी बोलते हैं और इंटरनल फैक्टर्स को सॉफ्ट भी बोलते हैं है ना सो बेस्ड अपॉन दिस फैक्टर्स वी कैन डिसाइड वेदर कैपिटल आशनिंग इज हार्ड और सॉफ्ट सो एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर्स लाइक टाइट कैपिटल मार्केट कंडीशंस दैट मींस टाइट मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी हाई रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट like you can see today also this is happening nowadays there is a impending recession as news say 2023 recession will come by the mid or end of the 2023 so now people are having you know even uh, you see monetary policy of the rbi very high rate of interest they are increasing the rate of interest every time so the current situation in the current situation the businessman will be very cautious in raising the external money Okay. Next, FDI regulations. So, depending upon whether FDI regulations are strict. So, if they if they are strict, then we have limited funds. And also, keeping in mind the debt equity ratio. So, normally, the standard debt equity ratio is two is to one. so even if we have more amount of money available from the outside suppose bank is ready to finance but we want to we don't want to disturb our debt equity ratio internal factor it is for example the management is overburdened from existing projects only existing business mein they are preoccupied
they don't have the time to take so many projects and second is they want to avoid avoiding extra business or financial risk avoiding extra business or financial risk based on the time frame based on time frame capital budgeting decisions can be of two types one where resource limitation exist only in a starting period or initial time there is one case and the second case is resource limitation exist throughout the life cycle of the project So either resource constraint can be only initially, or it can be over a long, uh, you know, over the life cycle, throughout the life. so in your book we have given it on page number 114 but this content that i am giving you in the class is better comprehensive to the point ready made answer theek hai to main aapko ek ready made answer bana ke de raha hu the language of the book can be good for understanding but may not be perfect for writing good answers that is where the role of class come into come into play Which one? Yeah, resource. See, basically, resource constraint can either be only in the starting period. That means when we are starting the project, then there is a resource constraint. But maybe after two three year, we will have more resources. There will not be any limitation of resource. This is one situation. Another situation is that throughout the life of the life cycle of the project, there will always be con resource constraint. so two different scenarios are possible right now <clears throat> very important principles of capital rationing <coughs> or decision process and decision criteria that is used in case of capital rationing situation when we have the capital rationing situation what decision process and what decision criteria we are using okay first of all uh, there we have some assumptions while we are practically we are assuming 
नंबर वन द कोस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल इज नॉन वी आर अवेयर वाट इज द डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर और वाट इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल फर्स्ट एजम्पन सेकेंड एजम्पन इज दैट वी आर अवेयर अबाउट टाइमिंग एंड अमाउंट ऑफ कैश फ्लोज ऑफ ऑल द प्रोजेक्ट दैट मीन्स वी हैव द रिक्विज डेटा ऑफ ऑल द प्रोजेक्ट देन ओनली वी कैन कंपेयर एंड देन ओनली वी कैन गो फॉर द डिसीजन मेकिंग now what is the criteria decision criteria in this case which kind of project we will choose so only those projects will be considered which fulfill two conditions we will consider those kind of project which are fulfilling two conditions number 1 the cost of the project is less than or equal to the funds amount of funds available with the company right so if we have 1000 10 crore rupees and the cost of project is 15 crore rupees then we cannot implement this in any manner so we should not even consider this case you know and secondly the benefits or the return expected is more than the cost of capital or in other words we can say it is a profitable project so we can finance it from our pocket that means from the available funds and it is profitable also agar profitable hai tabhi so consider karenge then only it is comparable if it is not profitable then it should not even even be considered because we have the limited fund if we have unlimited fund then we can say we can think of unprofitable also maybe for some other reason social reason or some other reason but if we have the limitation of fund then we will consider only profitable fund and only those fund whose requirement is met from our available funds yes now what is the decision process or so these uh, assumptions decision criteria decision process is these are the subheadings ye subheadings hain in your examination try to highlight this subheading underline so that it becomes easier for the examiner to identify so depending upon if it is a case of independent project means accept eject hai na then accept in order of priority accept in order of priority within available funds 
means basically what we do we set a ranking so those project which are having the higher ranking we will choose those project first and number 2 is a mutually exclusive project here the cost of selected projects no no i think i am doing a mistake na yeah? hmm basically if it is a case of uh, mutually exclusive then we have limited number of project then we have to create a ranking so ranking wala jo matter hoga wo it will come in mutual exclusive project independent mein we have to yeah so please ch change this this is in case of mutually exclusive actually in mutually exclusive we will create a ranking because you know acceptance of one will be rejecting others and in case of independent project we will we might choose because all the profits all the all, all of them are profitable so we can choose as long as the cost of selected project do not exceed the funds available and here also definitely we will choose more profitable project first so basically here what we do we create the we choose the positive npv project hum kya karte hain we basically calculate the npv and those project which are having the positive npv we calculate their profitability index and npv both and then we compared combinedly okay so this we will solve some numerical problem then we will explain this then you can understand this that is the numerical part you will not be able to understand right now then uh, page number 115 please come lease financing lease financing this you have to do yourself lease financing means basically it's a contractual arrangement where one party is giving something on lease to another party so this is there and there are multiple kind of leads page number 116 next page types of leasing basically first is the finance lease where basically the rental is given but actually this is a installment kind of thing means it is a kind of indirectly buying so finance lease mein kya hoga ki as soon as you complete the lease payment the asset is yours at the end of the life at the end of the life or at the end of the lease pe period the asset ownership shifts to the user that is a finance lease फाइनेंस लीज में क्या हो रहा है कि इट इन्वॉल्व पेमेंट ऑफ रेंटल ओवर इन ऑब्लिगेटरी नॉन कैंसिलेबल लीज पीरियड सफिशियंट इन टोटल टू अमोटाइज द कैपिटल आउटले ऑफ द लेसर एंड लीव सम प्रॉफिट दैट मीन्स जो लेसर मीन्स जो रेंट पे देने वाला होगा जो मालिक होगा उसका द ऑनर दे विल गेट द कैपिटल रिकवर्ड ऑल्सो एंड दे विल गेट सम प्रॉफिट ऑल्सो ओवर ए पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इन सच लीज द लेसर इज ओनली ए फाइनेंसर एंड इज यूजली नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन द एसेट सो जो ऑनर है जो जो लेसर है दैट इज एक्चुअली द काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंसिंग पर्सन नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन ओनिंग द प्रॉपर्टी ओके प्लीज राइट वन लाइन हियर प्लीज राइट वन लाइन हियर एट द एंड ऑफ द लीज पीरियड एट द एंड ऑफ द लीज पीरियड द ऑनरशिप ऑफ द एसेट एट द एंड ऑफ द लीज पीरियड at the end of the lease period the ownership of the asset transfers gets automatically transferred gets automatically transferred
to the lessee. Right. Then next is <coughs> operating lease. And operating lease is normal lease. Like you are giving without transferring the ownership. It is simple, like giving some building on rent. That is operating lease. Or giving some machine on rent. That is operating lease. Third is sale and lease back. So basically what happens in this case, the the lessee, first this person sells the asset to the some other person and then take the same asset as a on the lease. You know, it's kind of indirect financing only. So the lessee sells an asset for the cash to a prospective lesser and then leases back the same asset, making the fixed periodical payment for its use. The lease back arrangement in sale and lease back type of leasing can be in the form of finance lease or operating lease. So again, this fi the, the second decision, the second one, again can be financing or leasing. Are you getting? First, me kya kya ki lesser lessee has sold to a lesser. Now it is taking the lease back. But this taking the lease back can again be of two type. Either it can be operating or financing. Either at the end of the period ownership will shift or will not shift. Okay. Then others are given. You can read yourself. Not that much important because so far they have asked simple question on lease financing. 2001 only they asked one question on uh, types of lease leasing. Please read it yourself. It is very simple. No numerical. They will not ask any kind of numerical here. Okay. Any question, anyone? Okay, so we will stop the class here and please write the answer to the 2021 question given given at the end, okay? And you have to submit it, everyone. Now it is, I will make it compulsory to submit one answer. Okay? So offline people, write on a hard copy, show it to me after the class. Online people, write, take a picture and send on the telegram. So keep writing. It is not about the content, you can the content is you only have, but now it is about the way you write the answer. Okay. Any question?